Hello, today we're going to run through a solo game of Herbaceous by Pencil First Games. The solo version is played similarly to the multiplayer game with a few changes. For the solo version, first of all you're going to remove 36 cards from the game, which is half the deck. Once those are removed, you draw one card and put it face up next to the draw pile and that card is going to be the discard pile. Then you draw two cards and place them over there, and those are going to be the community garden cards. Then you draw three cards, put them face up, and that is your garden. And similarly, you have your garden pots and planters and whatnot right there at the bottom. I've separated the discard pile with another private garden marker just to make it easier to differentiate between the two, plus my private garden right here. Now, the gameplay is a little different than a multiplayer game. Not too much different, but just a little. Instead of drawing two cards and planting one in either the community garden or your private garden and then putting the other one in the other garden that you didn't use, you're gonna be drawing three cards, one at a time, so you don't see the other ones until after you've decided what to do with the current one you've drawn. The first card you draw, you can either choose to discard it put it in the community garden or add it to your private garden. If you choose to add it to your private garden, for example, the next card you draw has to be discarded or added to the community garden. And then the third card that you draw gets placed in the remaining location that you haven't yet used. So one card can go to the discard pile, one card can go to the community garden, and one card can go to your private garden. If at any time there's a fifth card placed in the community garden, then all cards in the community garden are discarded. And since you already start with three cards in your private garden, you may pot on your first turn, if you want. The game ends when you can no longer pot your herbs, or if the draw pile is gone, exhausted, if you will. After the game, you score your points and compare them to the chart on the solo rules and see if you're a fledgling grower, a beginner planter, a clever cultivator, a talented gardener, a professional herbalist, or a true green thumb harvester. All right, and that's it. Let's get straight into it. Now, for my first turn, I could choose to pot because I already have certain cards. And let's take a look. I have one, two, three here, and four, five that are different. So I could technically pot some here and get eight points right off the bat. But let's take a minute and see what else we can get. So my first card is Lavender. I already have a Lavender, so if I'm trying to get for these ones, I might as well discard it since I already have one and I don't need multiple. Not yet, at least. So that was my first card. The second one is also a Lavender, which is a shame because now I could have gone for Lavenders. But I'll put that in the Community Garden. The next one I draw is Sage. All right, and we already have a Sage up there. And so that is my turn, moving on to the second turn. Now, I could choose to pot again, but let's see. I only have one, two, three, four, five. I still only have five that are different, so I could keep going for that, or I could just pot them and call it a draw. Well, I'm going to keep going. Another Sage. How wonderful. So I could keep this and try planting Sage, but I'll discard it because that's what I do. A rosemary. Well, I already have a rosemary, but I might as well add it here. Whoops. And for my third card, who tarragon. So I am running out of room up here. Once I get five, they all go into the discard pile. So starting my next turn, I'm going to pot some things. I'll take these two. If I can get them. and a lavender, and a rosemary, and saffron. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So I have five that are different, and so those go out there right there. So we can see that there are five different cards for eight points. Could have been better, but that's the luck of the draw for you. Moving on to the next turn, we have another lavender. So I'm gonna park that right up there. Next, we have a Rosemary, and because I already have a Rosemary here, I'm going to keep that as well, so maybe I can go for pears. And next, we have Basil, which would have been nice for all of the different kinds. All right, so there's still two up there, so I can keep going safely. We got one Saffron. Let's put it in 
my garden. And a second saffron, so we can put that there and that'll give us another pair. And then this one goes straight to the discard pile, which is a mint, which is worth a point, and that is too bad. We have three cards here, so we can get away with one more round drawing up to see if we can get an extra pair of cards. We can, you know what? I'm just going to discard Dill and hope for a Sage to come up. And it's a Saffron. We might as well keep that right next to ours. And a Bay Leaf. That's not gonna help us. So right now, we're going for pairs. So Saffron, Saffron. Lavender. Come on, Lavender. Lavender. Rosemary, Rosemary. So that's one, two. Ah, where'd the other rosemary go? There it is. So that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, and that matches. So we have six cards for 12 points for our doubles, our pairs. And we can close up the gap. Now we're running out of cards here and we still have two left. So let's keep going. Ooh, another saffron. Maybe we can get, well, we've already used quite a few saffrons. So those might not be the best idea to keep for the for the singles. So let's put that in the discard pile a time. Let's keep that here. So hopefully it can be safe from being discarded. And dill. Dill will go there. Now I could pot, but I can still go safely because I only have three cards up there. So those aren't going to get discarded. Chive. I'm going to keep the chive in my garden. So I have chive and a time and if I get the next one that has a point on it I'll be able to pot them all there and get the all-famous herb biscuit so I believe that was my first one. Oh, and this is the third one that I wanted the mint and so the next one obviously has to go into the discard pile now there are four cards up here if I take one more turn without potting these are all gonna go away and I really want that mint so I'm gonna pot I take the mint, I take the chive, and I take the time to plant these. Right here, right now, and I get the all delicious herb biscuit. So we'll put that right on top. And you only get that, remember, when you have all three, one, two, three uh, points. So I've potted and now it's time to keep drawing. The last one we are going for is all of the same. And since there are no rosemaries out there, I'm just gonna discard that and hope for the best. A bay leaf. Let's keep that down there. And another rosemary. See, those might have been good to keep. But what do you do? This is the tricky part. Do I plant what I have now? Which would be basically two bay leaves and that's only six points, or do I Discard all those by taking another turn and hoping for the best. Let's discard them. Tarragon. So that's gonna be gone. So we'll put this here since that won't really matter. And sage, we already have a sage here, so let's keep that and hope this is a, another rosemary. See, rosemary would have been okay. There's five here, so they go into the discard pile but I still have my private garden here. Another sage, let's keep that there. A dill, we're not looking for a dill, so we'll put that away. Maybe it's another sage. Come on. And it's rosemary. Rosemary would have been nice. So all the cards in the draw pile are gone, so I have one more turn, one more chance to pot. And so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the sages the wise sages. Problems of not having fingernails is that you have troubles picking up cards. So I have three, three sages. So those will go there for 10 points. Now that the game is over, we can clear things up a little bit. So let's throw everything else that we haven't used into the discard pile. Goodbye everything. And let's count our points. So this biscuit gives us five points. So that's awesome. And these give us six points because there's three cards in here. So six points for that, plus the points listed on the cards themselves. 
So six plus six is 12. So that's pretty good. So we'll keep those there. And for this one, as we said, we had three cards that were the same, and that gives us 10 points for that one. This one gave us one, two, three, four, five, six cards, which gives us 12 points. And this one gave us one, two, three, four, five, which is eight points. All right. Now, adding all these scores together, that'll give us 47 points. Then, to see how well you did, you check the back of the solo variant instructions, and you say, I got 47. Oh, right at the bottom of Talented Gardener. Not too shabby. So I'll keep that and call myself Talented. So there you go. There's Herbaceous Solo. It is wonderfully quick. And for an added challenge, you can use the remaining 36 cards that you did not use in this setup to play it again and then add your score from both games and see what your score comes out to. On the Solo scoring card, it asks if you can score 114 points or more. I have yet to do that, but I'm still trying. Anyway, that's Herbaceous. It's a quick game. It looks great on the table, and it's a really good one for solo and with multiplayer. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and thank you for watching. Until next time, don't just play games, immerse yourself.